Sunday morning, as always. We are here for a little Q&A, plus a little talk about a subject that people have been asking me about. So, good morning, Angela. It might be something you're wondering about, too. You may have wondered this for a while, and, you know, it's, it's, it's a big topic. It's a big topic, but it goes with a lot of, a lot of things in life. Good morning, Vias. Hey, Derek. <clears throat> Thanks, Angela. So the topic today, hey, it's Visor. The topic today is, is it wrong to want to be famous? This goes for rich, there's a lot of things that it could go with. Hey, Polly and friends. Hey, Frank. <clears throat> so whether it's rich, whether it's famous, whether it's to have some kind of <clears throat> celebrity status or win some kind of award or whatever puts you like out there in front. We're gonna talk about that. Hey, Rafaela. Good morning. So uh, the topic today, is it wrong to want to be famous? Hey, Karen. Uh, I think it was Blake that inboxed me this question a few weeks ago, and he's asked it more than once, so I thought, I better cover this um, in one of my lives so we can talk about it. Have you guys ever wanted to be rich or famous or have, you know, to be out there, to be prominent? Hey, Caroline, uh, Carolina. Elena wanted me to let you know that she's stuck at the airport with no Wi-Fi. Aw. Well, you will be missed, Elena. Hope you can catch this later. Hey, Neved. Hey, Erica. Um, so, <clears throat> I don't know if Blake is on today, but he is the one that asked this question. And, um, hey, Anadit. Hey, story times and more. Oh, your name is also Catherine. Cool. Teams YT is here. Anna is here. Lily is here. So, <clears throat> what do you guys think? Do you guys think it's wrong to want to be famous? <laughs> oh, chime in the chat. Hey, Harley. Um, so, uh, hey, Lizzie. Is it wrong to want to be famous? Well, I guess I would ask you, Erica. Hey, Gregory. Do you, uh, somebody asked, do you consider yourself famous? Uh, I don't. I don't consider myself famous. Abaga, hi from the Philippines. S is it Sire, Sire Vin? Hi. No, Derek, I'm actually wearing tennis shoes. Woo! <laughs> can you believe I can lift my leg that high? <laughs> um, pink tennis shoes <laughs> to go with my pink top. Hey, Rodrigo. Uh, one, somebody said I'm famous, kind of. We got Alex here on, on a rug. Um, being famous is good. It does steal the privacy, though. Hey, Malik, happy birthday. And thank you, Rodrigo. We've got M336YZ saying you're one of the best actors. Okay, Nivette said it depends if you want it. Or, or if you do want, I prefer to want to be famous. Hey, Angel. So we've got some people, um, <laughs> somebody on here saying that they're famous. We've got people who say it's not wrong to be famous. So I would question, why do you want to be famous? Danny is back. So what is it that makes you want to be famous? I would start asking yourself, what is my motive? What, what is the reason that I want to be famous? We've got Shirley here. Uh, it was Timothy's birthday, oh no, it was Eli's birthday yesterday. Um, we just did a little tiny celebration because we're doing the big, the big day in about a week and a half. So my son Eli turned four yesterday. Hey CJ, hey Nicola. Um, and I had a table read for a TV show during the day and my husband was out dirt bike racing. 
So in the evening, we took him to go see that animated movie, Bad Guys. He's not ready for movies yet. We've discovered that last night. He could not sit still. He could not sit in his chair. Um, and he was getting up in the movie theater. He was dancing. He was running around. He was trying to leave. <clears throat> so, yeah. Uh, he did okay during the Clifford movie, but I think that's because it was like a big dog just running around and terrorizing and knocking things over and big he did okay in that movie but the bad guys cartoon had like a storyline thank you for the compliment angel <clears throat> then he couldn't follow the storyline and then we took him out for pizza he wanted to go we opened presents just um the four of us and his godmother <clears throat> let's see we said anna rug anna Rag said if fame comes on its own it's fine but running behind it is wrong Thank you, Charlie. Charlie complimented my hair. Uh, Seraphin says, I want to be famous because I want to spread kindness and help people in need. Okay, so let's talk about that. So fame to what end? And guys, I'm going to, I have some notes. I took some notes this morning on some scratch paper I found. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to talk through my notes and, and I will maybe not be looking up at that time. Uh, Brittany's on the right track. It's definitely not wrong to be famous. It depends on your intention. So let's go a little deeper into that. Um, some people, when they become famous, it elicits pride in them. And uh, what does the book of Proverbs tell us about pride? Proverbs 16, 18. It says that pride comes before destruction. Hey, Momo. And a haughty spirit before a fall. Haughty people who think they're better than you, right? Um, <clears throat> so, I used to have this, I used to, um, I used to want to be a well-known actor so that more people would know about me and would buy my books and would listen to me so I could get my message out. Um, <laughs> Brittany saying, uh, the Kardashians. <clears throat> Charlie was saying, I was just reading Proverbs yesterday. It's so <clears throat> relevant to this day and age. Elena finally made it on from the airport. Well, hello, Elena. So is it wrong to want to be famous? Well. If it's not going to make you have pride, right, <clears throat> if it's not going to make you feel haughty and make you feel better than everyone else, Nicola wants to know what I'm drinking. This is watermelon juice blended with parsley. Um, so, wanting to become this famous or well-known actor, um, when I realized I, I, I wasn't enjoying the journey of trying to become a famous actor, all the auditions and all the hoops and all the, 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 all the stuff and getting these roles that I didn't care about that weren't important. Yes, Blake, we are on here talking about what you asked about today. You just never know if I'm going to talk about what you guys asked me to talk about. So, um... I just was like, I'm done. I don't, don't want to pursue this acting thing anymore because I wanted to write my books. I wanted to put these messages out there. I wanted to put these YouTube videos out there that were going to like help people, touch them, move them, inspire them, get them to get a closer relationship with God. And, you know, doing the acting became less and less. And it was interesting because I went to like this self-help self -help workshop. It was like this three-day workshop. Yeah, Frank, being famous does have pros and cons. And yes, Manish, I, you know me from the Darman videos. You are correct. So I went to this workshop and I went up to the microphone because they had, everybody had to come up to the microphone and say, you know, what they wanted and their career and all of that. And so I went up to the microphone and I said, I want to become a famous actor, a well-known actor, so that 
I have a larger audience who will who will buy my books and hear my messages and get you know I had this these things bubbling up inside me that I felt like God wanted me to speak and it was so interesting because the lady running the workshop was just kind of like uh so you want to be famous so that you can have a better career with your books and your writing why don't you just focus on your books and your writing <laughs> it was like duh but I'm like but who would want to read my stuff? Nobody knows who I am. And, and you know, a few years ago, I'm reading my journals from back like in 2016. And God kept saying, put your work out there. Publish your work. I'm like, why? Who's going to read it? Nobody knows who I am. Right? Hey, Colin. So, <laughs> we have to trust God when he tells us to do something right. So God knew he was going to open a door. God knew he was going to give me an opportunity where I would be seen more, where probably 90% of you guys that are on right now know me from Darman, right? You probably know that I'm a writer. You probably know that I have three books out. I just finished my fourth. Woo woo. Hopefully that'll come out in the next month. But to what end? Okay. So if you guys are praying for something, whether it's fame or riches or to have a hot girlfriend or <laughs> to have a rich husband who can support you or whatever you guys are praying for, uh, um, whatever you're praying for, have you ever wondered why like sometimes it doesn't happen? Have you ever wondered that? Okay. Um, and I see you guys are asking a lot of really great questions, but they're not related to this topic. So let me finish talking about this topic and then I will definitely get back to you on the questions. And if people are asking questions that you guys, my regulars, know the answer to, go ahead and answer them. Okay, so James, the James chapter 4 verses 2 and 3 says, you do not have because you do not ask God. How many of you guys have heard that scripture before? You do not have because you do not ask God. Okay, you know, we've heard knock and the door will be open to you. Seek and you will find. Search me and you will find me. <clears throat> so, okay, so then why, why am I not getting my prayers answered? If I'm praying these certain things, well, the verse goes on to say, when you ask God and you do not receive... It's because you ask with the wrong motives. What are your motives for wanting what you want? It says you ask with the wrong motives that you may spend what you get on your own pleasures. Uh, some versions say that you may lavish it upon yourself. Like some people want to be in the limelight, so they're like, Look at me, aren't I great? Look, I'm so important now. I'm proving all my bullies wrong from high school. I'm proving my teacher wrong who never said I would amount to anything. I'm, you know, whatever it is. Okay, so w whatever you want. Well, <clears throat> like Angela just said, seek the giver and not the gift. So you want to seek God and not what he can do for you. Or what some people say is you want to seek his face, not his hands. Instead of like, what can you give me, God? Seek his face, right? So Colossians 3.17 talks about um, do everything in the name of the Lord. So whatever you're doing, it, are you doing it in the name of the Lord? Think about that. What you do on a regular basis, are you doing that to honor God? That's the question to ask. <clears throat> does what I want or what I'm doing, does it honor God? So what does the book of John, 1 John, tell us? <clears throat> all these things that we want, all these things that we need. I want this fame, I need this paint, I need this car, I need this big house, I need this, this, this. I want this, I'll feel complete. I'm striving for this, I'm going to get this. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get myself in this certain shape that I'm gonna have this body of this Greek god or goddess and then I'm gonna do this and then. <clears throat> so 1 John tells us, do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, all these things out in the world, all these things I can get, then the love of the Father is not in him. 
No, I don't think you can be in Darman if you live in another country because he doesn't fly people in. You have to kind of be here. So if you love the things in the world, the love of the Father is not in you. Mm. For all the things of the world and all the desires of the flesh and the pride of life is not from the Father. All those things are not from the Father. And it's from the world. And the world is passing away and all of its desires. But whoever does the will of God abides forever. So it comes right back down to <clears throat> what Brittany and maybe one or two of you said um, about motives. Thank you, Rodrigo. I'm glad you liked that video with Rebecca. I have got more of those to come. Hopefully I will be posting those every other Friday. We shall see. So um, that's Sus Goat. Hi. Good morning. Um, Darman fan says, Catherine, does Darman accept video ideas? I don't know. I heard that he used to, um, yes, Momo, I've heard of that singer, that he used to like meet up with a group of like middle-aged and high school kids every week for story ideas. I don't know if he does that anymore. This was like a year ago I heard that. So, <clears throat> who knows? Darm I know, wasn't that cool, Frank? I, I, I was like, wait, why is everybody speaking with an accent? I could do it. I, I don't, I'm glad they didn't call me for that one. <laughs> I don't I couldn't have done the accent. I don't believe in myself that much. <clears throat> I can tell a couple of the actors struggled with it a little, but they did a good job. But yeah, that was a fun one. Um, so, do you think God cares if you want to be rich or famous? <clears throat> You think he cares? Blake is saying the famous actors get the most opportunities. That's true. That's true. It does come with a lot of pitfalls too, though. Right? Do you want to be always under the microscope, always under the limelight to have everything you do picked apart by everyone? <clears throat> I was at the movie theater last night. I'm standing in line for popcorn for the kids and People are coming up to me wanting pictures with me. Cool, that's fine. No biggie. But when we were at the restaurant last night, people are pointing at me and whispering. They're not coming up to me and talking to me. They're like secretly, covertly taking photos of me and my family. I'm, and I'm not even famous. And so, I don't know. Some of that can be a little creepy, right? Like you could at least talk to me, I don't know. <sighs> it is what it is, right? So here's the thing. God isn't looking at what you want as much as he's looking at your motives behind what you want. Davin said they did the same thing to Britney Spears. Yeah. Oh, and people at that level, that's way worse. I mean, I think it was Jennifer Aniston won some kind of a lawsuit. She was in her home, I think, changing or she was doing something in her home in her own bedroom whatever maybe she had sheer curtains i don't know if she had but she's like lives way off from the street so some like famous celebrity photographer out on the street with like a tele what do they call those telephotographic lenses whatever the long lenses are called taking pictures of her in her own house in her own bedroom while she's naked and publishing like lawsuits like it's like it's crazy i I've, I've dealt with paparazzi situations not with myself but when i used to be a valet i would park cars at celebrity parties and i would see the celebrities and the paparazzi would come and bum rush them and ah taking photos and we would try to keep them away but it didn't always work um <clears throat> anyway you're not quite a Zoom camcorder because this is like high, high end. It's something about like a telephotographic lens or something like that. It's a super long lens <clears throat> that you put on the more expensive high end cameras. Okay, so it's, it's all about the intentions of your heart. And I talk about this extensively in my new course I'm writing called You Are Loved. Um, yeah, you'll find out about that. So 
Um, lazy cousin says he has a crush on me. Well, um, I hate to break it to you, but I'm taken. <laughs> hey, Caitlin. <clears throat> All right. So, um, yes, Raphael. <laughs> Momo, I'm not sure if I know any of her songs. So, let me get to you guys' comments and questions in a bit. I want to tell you how God looks at people. So what does 1 Samuel 16, 17 tell us? You know, they were choosing who was going to be the next king. And even the priest, you know, even if you're a priest, you can mess up and get wrong the, the, the intentions God has. So the priest is going and looking at all these sons that were of the same house. And of course he sees the one that's like the biggest and the strongest and the most handsome. And he says, Surely, surely he's the one who God wants to be the king. He's the one God wants to be like the next person to reign. And God was saying, no, no, I'm not pleased with him. That's not who I want. And, and he's looking at all the sons and, and he realizes God doesn't want any of them. Now the father only brought the best sons in the house. The sons that he thought had real promise that, would be kingly and whatever and then the priest thank you nicola for the gift the priest was like wait um do you have any more sons because i i know god told me to come here and you would be the one of your sons would be the next king but not god isn't pleased with any of these guys and, and then the dad was like oh i mean i do have my puny little not so handsome son david but he's out he, he's a shepherd Nobody wants a shepherd. He's out, he's out tending the flocks. He, <laughs> Turns out that's who God wanted. Because the scripture goes on to say, For the Lord does not see as a man sees or looks on the outward appearance. The Lord looks at the heart. So what's in your heart? Right? That matters. Yes, Manish, I know, Mayor. <laughs> what matters is what's going on inside you. Right? So, hmm, we may think our motives are always good and always clean and always pure. Like, oh, but God, if I'm famous, then I can help more people, right? That hardly ever happens, though. So, Proverbs 21, 2 says, every, every man thinks that he's right in his own eyes. Yes, Nicola, I'm going to do part three of the Darman Daughters, hopefully this Friday. This Friday, if my editors get on the ball and finish it. Okay, so God looks at the heart. So you want to be rich, you want to be famous, you want to have a car, you want to have this, you want to have a fancy house. What? Okay, but um, to what end? So I have a client. Um, I have a client, and he does pray for wealth, but it's so he can be a giver. He's already a really genu gen genuine giver and generous giver. Gregory, no, Shantae is not shady at all. She is the least shady person that I know of on Darman. I mean, we won't get into that right now, but he prays for wealth. Well, he's always giving generously and anonymously to people in need. He calls me this week saying, Catherine, you want an assignment? I'm like, an assignment? What does that mean? I don't usually have my clients call me to give me assignments. I usually give them assignments. <laughs> and he says, find, find a, two or three people in need and tell them God heard their prayers and I want to give them each a thousand dollars. I was like, okay, let me pray about that. Let me think about who's in need. Let me talk to them, whatever. He said, don't tell them where it's from. Just tell them God heard their prayer. And, and, and that's, that's what God likes, right? So when someone like that, who has this generous heart to give, who I just saw, I was with a 
a church meeting with him a couple days ago, and he he was he gave the speaker a thousand dollars. He gave the pastor a thousand dollars. He's just just a giver. And when someone like that prays for money, God's going to honor that, right? That's pure motives. He's confided in me that he there's this rescue group that rescues children out of brothels. He has told me that he's trying to amass this wealth because he wants to give them a million dollar donation anonymously, right? There's, there's people who are generous givers, but they want their name on everything. Yes, I will fund that wing of the hospital if it's called the Catherine Norland wing of the hospital. Now, granted, I'm not putting all that down either because it depends on what the motive behind that is. Maybe there's a good motive for that. I don't know. But the people that just want, look at me, aren't I great? Aren't I generous? Aren't I, you know, because the Bible says when, when you give, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. Like, don't even tell yourself what you're doing. Right? Um, thank you for the gift, Derek. He asks, how do you recover from foot pain you get from wearing heels all day in the parking lot for a tar man shoot? I don't know, putting them up, not walking on them, uh, Epsom soak bath, I don't, I don't know. Let's, yeah, probably just soaking them in warm water and just staying off my feet. If I'm in heels all day at work, I'm not coming home and exercising, that's for dang sure. Um, okay, so if you don't know, maybe you guys don't know. Maybe you think your motives are pure, because, right, Proverbs says every man thinks that his way is right. Well, here's one way you can find out. In the book of Psalms, Psalm 139, 23 says, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me. Try me and know my thoughts. Right? And so you can ask God, okay, try me. Test me. Figure me out. Search me. You know, I want to make sure I'm doing the right thing. The scripture goes on to say, and well, this is a different one. Psalm 51 says, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. So you ask God to search you. Are my motives right for wanting to be famous? Are my motives right for wanting to be rich? Um... Hmm. Search me. Let me know. And then God created me a clean heart. You can ask God, created me a clean heart. Renew the right spirit within me. That's a spirit that loves God, trusts him, wants to do what's pleasing to him. Right? And, and, and you can be sure God will do that for you. Because he says in Ezekiel 36, 26, and I will give you a new heart heart. I will remove the heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. So where are you guys right now? Is this, is this helping? Is this helpful? Am I just talking to myself right now? Or is this clearing some things up for you? Are you guys feeling like, oh, maybe, maybe it's okay to have what I want, but maybe the reason behind it is I have to, Caitlin, my goodness, you says she has 14 grandbabies and three adult kids. And I always pray for my entire family. Amazing. Majestic Photography Life is saying, Happy birthday to Elijah. Okay, good. Momo is saying it's very helpful. 123 Theater says, Yes, underlying motivation should be clean and selfless. And it's not like, you guys, you know, if, if, if God blesses you financially, doesn't mean you have to give every penny of it away and have nothing first. Like, I used to do this. I had the wrong idea. Whenever God would give me money financially or bless me, I would give it, like, all the way to homeless people, and then I didn't have enough for my bills. And then I'm charging things up on the credit card because I gave all my money away for my bills. So we have to have balance, right? You can't be so selfless that it's to your own detriment, right? So find the balance. Don't think you're not allowed to have anything because that's not what I'm saying at all. It's not actually even scriptural 
for you guys to be broke. Did you know that? Some Christians, some organizations, some people think and preach that uh, monks and nuns sometimes and uh, take vows of poverty. Vows of poverty. Thank you for the gift, Lizzie. You're so generous. Why? Third John 2 tells us, beloved, that's us. That's those God loves. I wish above all things that you would prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prospers. So what's our soul, right? I talk about this. You guys are going to learn about this in level two of the course. We're going to learn all about the soul. It's your mind. It's your will. It's your emotions. He wants all your mental capacities to prosper. But he, he, he wants you to also prosper and be in good health, right? You can't be a blessing to your friends, your neighbors, to people in need if you don't have anything to give. So people who say, oh, it's selfish to want more. It's selfish. Well, no, it depends on what your motives are behind that. One, two, three theater says, great input. I needed that balance. Thank you for the insight. Shirley saying, oh, I love this course. Um, <clears throat> Yes, I do still play Karen's Darman film. Um, I got cast in, in one in a couple weeks, but it's not in Darman's film. It's in a it's in a new feature film coming out called Born to Hustle. And um, oh, thank you for your generous gift, Angela. You're so kind. So it's okay to have money. It depends on what you're going to do with it, right? But it's not scriptural to be broke and poor and not have anything left. And that's a whole different topic. And I see your, your questions. Let's see, Charlie, I thought Darman video mirroring what happened between Rock and Smith was really inconsiderate of Dar. What are your thoughts? I don't actually even know what you're talking about. So I can't comment on it. Rock and Smith. I don't know who Rock and Smith are. Um, okay. So when we start craving status, here's what happens if we don't have the right motives. Okay, I'm going to tell you guys the flip side, just so it's this is a well-rounded discussion. Um, so if you don't have the new heart, <laughs> and you're wanting to be rich or famous or gain any kind of status, did somebody just... Thank you for the gift, Elena. So sweet. Um, when we're craving that status, it causes many people to wander away from God. Thank you guys for the happy birthday wishes for Elijah. It causes people to like wander away from God. And I, I remember my past, my old pastor where I used to go would talk about this a lot. People would pray, pray, pray that God would bless them and bless them financially. And then God would bless them. And then they would like buy a boat. And then instead of being at church on Sundays, they're out on the lake. You know, so priorities, right? Go to the lake on Saturdays with your new boat God blessed you with, right? Okay, so, um, okay. <laughs> so 1 Timothy 6, 9, 9 and 10 says, But those who desire to be rich fall into temptation and into a snare and into harmful desires that purge people into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil desires. It is through this craving that some have wandered away from the faith and pierced themselves with so many pains. So it's the, and people quote this verse wrong all the time. They say, they say, um, money's the root of all evil. No, the scripture says the love of money is the root of all evil. You can be broke and love money. You can be broke and be wanting it and coveting it and putting it above everything else. And so my old pastor, um, Pastor Mel, at, uh, in his presence church used to say, you can have as much money as you don't love, right? The moment you start loving it, it becomes a hook in your jaw. You're caught. You'll then you start doing. Then you start 
making decisions based on, well, how much money am I going to get from this? Am I going to turn this down? Am I going to do this? Is this going to cost me? You start, you start thinking through a money brain, like, oh, is that worth my time? Is this, and of course that can be balanced too, right? Some, you don't want to sell yourself short, but when you start making decisions based on money, good example of this is his wife, um, Desiree Ayers. She was a stunt woman in Hollywood. She was a stunt woman in Hollywood, and she was supposed to do this thing in this car where the car would blow up. It was on some, oh, what show was that? It was some show in the 80s, Airwolf or something like that. She used to double for Daisy Duke on Dukes of Hazard, and you know, I think it was an Airwolf, and they had the scene where they wanted to blow up the car. God told her not to do it. She prayed about it. She was like a new Christian. God told her not to do it. And I'll get you guys' questions. I'm almost done. This is all that I have left. Is this much? Then you guys can type your questions in. God told her not to do it, but she had a money hook in her jaw. She made her decisions based on money. She's like, nothing's going to happen. It's going to be fine, whatever. They didn't get to the stunt that day. Thank you for the gift, Momo. So she, she, they call her back for the next day. God says, don't do it. Do not go to work today. But look how much it's paying. It's like $500 for today. And that, that's a lot of money in the 80s. It's not a lot of money now. But in the 1980s, that was a lot of money. It's probably like $1,500 today. I don't know. So doesn't happen. They run out of time. They don't shoot that. Thank you, Gregory. Gregory says I'm a preacher. <laughs> um, she goes, they call her back for a third day. God says, do not do it. And I think, I think even the third day, they didn't get time to do the stunt. So maybe it was the fourth day she goes back. It was either the third or fourth day she goes back. God told her not to go do this job. Whoever this person is that loaded the, the fake bomb, the smoke bomb, the whatever blow up thing, did it wrong. The thing blows up for real. This stunt woman, Desiree, she gets second and third degree burns all over her face, all over her hands, all over her neck, all over her chest. Her lips are gone. Her lips are completely burned off because she wasn't obedient to God. You know, there are, there, you can, you can read documented stories of people who were supposed to be on the planes flying on 9-11 and they, God told them, do not get on the plane today. And their life was spared because they listened. Okay, so you got to be real secure with that, that voice, the voice of God and hearing from him and doing or not doing what he doesn't want you to do or does want you to do, right? Depends on what it is. So... When you don't listen, there's destruction, right? Pride comes before destruction and a haughty spirit before the fall. I can do it, God. It's no big deal. I've jumped out of cars. I've jumped off buildings. I'm a stunt woman. It's not going to be any big deal. I can handle it. Pride comes before destruction. She's in the hospital. Well, we're not even getting, getting into what happened with her. My point is you have to... You have to listen to God. You cannot have a money hook in your jaw. It leads people away from the Lord. It results in all kinds of evil. <clears throat> and James 4.2 says, Here, you, you see people doing this every day. Looting, stealing, doing different things. Uh, back in the 90s, it, on the, it made news a lot. Kids were getting killed and murdered because of their tennis shoes or their starter jackets with like the Raiders or different football fan football teams on, I don't know. People were getting hurt because other people wanted those. And that's like right out of the Bible, right? James 4, 2. You do not have, so you murder. You covet, so you can obtain. You fight and you quarrel. Okay, so people are wanting all these things, and because they want all these things and don't have them, right? How many people get killed because someone wants to take their purse or their wallet? That's what the love of money will do. That's that need, that want. And, and James 4, 4 says, you adulterous people. What does God mean when he calls us adulterous people? That means we're cheating on God, right? 
Do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Therefore, whoever wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy with God. Oh boy. If you don't know what, they, what I mean by the world, I do talk about that. I talk about what that is on my You Are Worthy Level 2 course. So one last thing, one last note on that. Quarrel is fighting Charlie. You're quarreling with one another, you're fighting with one another. One last thing on that, and then I'm gonna happily answer all of your questions. <clears throat> Gregory says, you don't have, so you murder. I thought you were gonna say, so you see. <laughs> last thought on this, money, wealth. Here's what it says in Ezekiel. Ezekiel 5.10, those who have money will never have enough. How meaningless to think that wealth brings happiness. The more you have, the more people come to help you spend it. How many know if you win the lottery, you got second, third, fourth cousins, friends coming to ask you for money? So what good is wealth? except to watch it slip through your fingers. And you know who wrote that? Solomon, the richest man who ever lived. Richer than Bill Gates, richer than Jeff Bezos, who was the guy that owns Amazon, right? Greed, yes, greed. Okay, thank you, Raphael. He says he's proud of me. Um, I'm ready for your questions. Did you get anything out of that? Was that? Was that worth showing up today? Was that, was that a little church service for you guys? <laughs> Does that answer the question on, is it okay to be famous or rich? Speaking of broke, God, please help us get through these gas prices, right? Oh yeah. How long does it usually take to film a Darman video? Now that the videos are longer, it used to be one to two days, but now it's like three to five days, depending on... <laughs> Um, Purple or Ginny, let's see, I have a question. So my boyfriend and I are having hard times, such as arguments, jealousy, and others. So my question is, how do I stop arguing with him? Because I know it's not healthy to argue. Oh, I would have a lot of questions to ask you about that. But I would say, start by, I mean, you can't control what he does. So start by you not arguing. You not arguing with him. When he wants to yell or scream or argue or accuse you, you just be calm, cool, collected, listen. Even if what he's saying is all wrong, even if what he's saying is lies, even if he's making his, his uh, jealousy is making him think you're doing this and you're doing that, just listen to him calmly. There's no reason to yell or fight back. You know, the person in power is the person that doesn't have to yell or scream or raise their voice. You have power and emotional stability and emotional intelligence when you can hear what people are saying and not have to fight back, not have to defend yourself, right? So that's where I would say is just be able to listen. And then when he's done, don't interrupt. When he's done, when he's blah, 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 and then and then wait, wait a second or two and say, are you done? Or is that, is there anything else? And then he might more. And then even when he's done the second thing, okay, uh, are you done? Was that it? Okay. Um, and then calmly hit the points that he's asking you about. Okay, you said that I was cheating on you because I went, because I wore makeup the other day. Well, you know what? I've been struggling with my self-esteem lately and I, I just felt like I wanted to feel good about myself. So I, I put on makeup today to go out. I, I'm not, you know, there's not anybody I'm seeing. You can, you can check my phone, you can look through my texts. I, I don't know what the topic is, but whatever it is, you discuss it with a calm mind. You don't get upset. Oh, you said I'm, I'm, I'm doing this or I'm doing that. Well, here's, here's what actually happened and here's why I did it. And I'm, I'm you know, and then if he doesn't like it, well, I'm, I'm sorry you don't agree with me, but that, that's what I seemed like the good thing to do at the time. And I, I'm sorry, I didn't think of how that might affect you or upset you and ask, like, well, what would you have done different? Like, what can I do better next time? You know, if you want to save that relationship, you really have to see things also from the other person's point of view and understand why they feel the way they do or why they're getting upset about things. And 
you want to really, instead of just seeing things from your point of view, you want to be able to see things from other people's point of view, right? So, hope that was helpful. Let's see what else you guys are saying. Um, were you ever a quarreling woman? Yes, I was early, early on in my marriage. I was offended by everything. I would get mean and upset and then I would scream and yell at my husband and then if he, if he gave no reaction, which he often did not, I'm like, are you even real? Are you a human? Don't you have any feelings? Because he would just be so like, couldn't get a rise out of him. I mean, I even resorted to throwing shoes at him at a certain point. I don't do that anymore. <laughs> but I wasn't always this sweet little thing you see right now. <laughs> he survived. He survived, though. He lived through my throwing shoes at him. <laughs> um, keep in mind, we haven't met yet since we are online dating. In August, it will be two years of us together. But he has autism, and I know it's hard for him controlling himself. I pray every day. Gotcha, Ginny. Okay, keep praying for him and, and hear him out. Listen to him and try to see things from his point of view and allay his fears. You know, if, if the things he's upset or scared about aren't true, then, you know, let him know that that's not true. And, you know, do the best you can to work it out. All right. Shirley says that my parents went to therapy to work on their relationship issues and they did it for our sake. Me and my brother and sister cannot bear to keep watching their arguments anymore. Luckily for me... I got all my arguments out of the way before I had kids. <laughs> um, yesterday, a man tried to steal my jacket, and now I'm scared to exit my house. Do you have any tips to get over it? Well, always pray before you leave the house. And always be vigilant when you're out and about. You know, always observing the people who are there, looking around. And, and ask God to give you discernment to know when somebody's a sketchy character. You know, sometimes these things blindside us and we don't always know what's going to happen. But, you know, you can't live in fear. Fear is from the enemy, right? Fear is from the devil. So you can't, <clears throat> you can't be stuck in a place of fear, not wanting to go out. That's, that's not, you gotta you have, have faith. So do it little by little. Uh, Momo says, have you heard the song, Torn? It's one of Natalie Ambrosia's songs, which was released in the 90s. Uh, I, I might know it if I heard it. I don't, it doesn't ring a bell right now. Danny says, I thought the Darman video mirroring what happened between Chris Rock and Will Smith was really inconsiderate of Dar. What are your thoughts on it? Why? Why did you think it was inconsiderate? What was inconsiderate about it? Didn't it teach a good life lesson? I mean, I thought it taught a good lesson. You tell me what, what was inconsiderate about it. Okay, Daniel says, hello, ma'am. Good morning, I hope you have a wonderful day, thank you. Uh, and if I haven't gotten to your question yet, go ahead and type it back in. Gregory asks, why isn't Brianni Walker in any more videos this year? Was she fired? Even Devin and Aiden Sophia are barely on videos now. I'm, I'm, <clears throat> I'm sorry, I will pop up in five more videos you that's, that's I, I mean, I think they're still in it. I haven't not seen them, I mean, this, this, um, this last year was sponsored by Cinema Grand Choice Quince, my favorite. Try sometime. Oh, you can't. Get to get, get, get today at Target or any old store. Not sponsored, by the way. Not sponsored. And, but, these are fake. But you know what they really like? <laughs> They look like maybe they look like a seven, seven in the box. Can you bounce them all? Huh? Can you bounce in it? Oh, he wants me to show you that they're not really this big. That's fake. This is the real size. False advertising. Okay. So this is my new favorite flavor. Okay. Goodbye. Okay. Goodbye. Sorry. Close the door and you're out, sweetie. Bye. <laughs> Uh, oh, is he? Was he wearing the Manifest shirt? Uh, cool. Um, could you start, let's see, <laughs> selling your smoothies, 
smoothie cats. Uh, I mean, people have asked me, people constantly ask me for my smoothie recipes. <laughs> that would be a whole different channel, wouldn't it? Um, where's the birthday boy? The birthday boy's still sleeping. Um, all my grandsons used to eat this for breakfast every morning. That's the new version. It's not cinnamon toast crunch, it's cinnagram toast crunch. It actually tastes like graham crackers. Uh, Devon, can you explain how you're born to colored eyes? I cannot explain it, but anyone who maybe has studied scientific gene stuff, I don't know, somebody said something about a recessive gene. I've heard a lot of things, but I've never sat down to study it because I don't even remember that I have it until someone brings it up. <laughs> you know, I just go about my daily life. I mean, you guys go about your daily life, you're not thinking about your eye color, are you? So when I'm sitting at my computer, I don't, I don't think, oh, I should look up how this happened. I just, I don't know. You guys can study it and then tell me. <laughs> uh, Nicola asks, would you rather play the good character or the bad character on Darman? Um, I would rather play both. Be right back. Hold on. <laughs> Sorry, um, I'm, I'm here. No, I'm not Catholic, I'm Timothy. Silly goose. Um, this is my silly glam toast crunch movie. As you can see, this is my new favorite flavor. Do you like the regular cinnamon toast crunch or do you like this flavor? Can you answer that question for me, guys? It's a quick question, come on! <laughs> you like the original one or do, you, or do you like this one? Yes, I know he's here. Okay, thanks. Oh, that was a good bathroom break. Oh, I didn't want you to tell me when I had to go to the bathroom. Sorry! <laughs> I was like, cover for me, Timmy. I gotta go to the bathroom really bad. <laughs> well, he told you so. I guess it's not a secret anymore. I was drinking too much juice this morning. Okay, Qu questions that I haven't answered yet. Um, <laughs> Anna, it says you were enjoying the session with Timothy. Mike says hi. All right, Natalie says hi to Timmy. Does Grace Marie still work at Darwin Studios? I believe so. I don't know of anybody who doesn't work there anymore except for Ricky. I guess there's a couple. I guess I know of a couple that don't work there anymore. Love from India. I watch all your episodes. We will search for your hustle movie trailers to add to our playlist. Um, they don't have a trailer yet. They just started filming today. I think they started filming today. My shoot day is on the 22nd. Um, Nicola wants to know why Ricky quit. I think if you look at her page, I think she talked about it on her Instagram page. I think she basically said it's just time for a new chapter in her life. She wants to expand. She wants to do different, she wants to do different stuff. Um, yeah. How come you are famous? I don't think I am. Um, how come anybody's famous? There can be a thousand million reasons. You can say it's hard work. You can say it's part luck you could say it's blessings you could say all different stuff good morning Catherine it's better to be close to the one above and read the Bible and you will be rich Proverbs 3 9 and 10 and 16 it says that yes and amen Momo wants to go back to LA do you have any good places that you'd like to go in LA I've kind of seen it all maybe not all but I've seen enough that I don't really need to go see more I'm taking Elijah to Universal Studios for his birthday next week. Um, so that'll be fun. Is there ever drama behind the scenes at Darman? Not openly. I mean, 
there's been maybe a time or two that I've heard about some actor acting like a diva or something. Um, but it's very rare. It's very rare. <laughs> there should, uh, uh, Nicholas says there should be a three cues with Kat with Mikey and Jaden. You know, I've thought about some of the kids, but we're talking about life experience. I don't know. How much life experience do you have when you're 10? We'll see. We'll see. Um, if I still had a crush on Sophia, but I'm a little too old, should I go for it or let it go? Let it go. Let it go. Um, better to have a crush on somebody your own age. Now, when you're over 18, that's a different story. When you're over 18 and the other person is over 18, then maybe go for it. But no, there's, um, there's been, it's been kind of scary. Some of the parents have expressed that their kids, their teens under our man have stalkers, like grown, grown men stalking their children. That's one of the pitfalls of being famous, right? <clears throat> Raphael says, my mom watches Dar videos all the time and she sees you on it and she likes you a lot. Oh, tell your mom thank you. Uh, Nicholas says, the vid where Mikey faked your CV made me laugh. CV, what is that? Are you talking about the one where he made fake resume? I don't know what a CV is. Um, can you please do a video on August 19th? Is that your birthday or something? <laughs> uh, um, are humbleness and self-respect mutually exclusive? No, I don't think so. Well, I'm not sure what you mean by that, but you could be humble or think you're being humble and not respecting yourself. So you could be saying, I'm being humble and you let everybody use you, trample on you, walk all over you, da 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 because I'm humble, I'm lowly, I'm nothing, I'm gonna let everybody else be great and I'm gonna be nothing. Well, that's not showing self-respect then, is it? Okay. Um, what do you think of Sandra Bullock? I think she's a great actress. I'm very good with technology, Smooch says. Uh, Devon, I try to share the Dharma videos with my siblings, but some of them don't follow the advice. Yeah. When I was eight years old, I was playing outside with my friends and a creepy man was following us around the neighborhood. Yeah, you gotta go run and tell an adult then, right, Emilio? Uh, where can I watch your old movies before Darman? Well, problem is a lot of them are not out or they only had a limited screening and I don't know if they ever went up online. Um, I, put, I put like a few of them on my YouTube channel, but I had to get permission from the filmmakers, unless I was one of the filmmakers. Um, so you could go to IMDB, type in my name, look at the stuff I've done, and Google those movies and try to find them. I don't know. I don't know. Um, but three movies for sure you can see. Magic Hour is on Amazon. My movie Cannibal Corpse Killers. Cannibal Corpse Killers is on Amazon, iTunes, Redbox Online, Fandango, a bunch of places. And a movie I did called Reality Terror Night, that is out somewhere. I don't know about the other ones. All right, can you interview Carlos Chavez? Maybe. Maybe you mean like a Sunday morning whole hour kind of thing? Um, five Darman actors you admire but haven't had the chance to work with yet. Oh man, that would require some thought. I'd need to go like, I can't off the top of my head. It's hard to think of people you haven't worked with that you admire. Like, usually it's hard to admire someone until you've gotten to know them. If you use the word admire, that's a tough one to answer. Um, but you could say... Who are some good actors that you enjoy that you haven't worked with yet? That I could give you a list of, but you know, it's hard to admire someone you don't know. I just pray that to stay safe and be more successful and bless God. 
Um, I can't wait for a vid with Rachel Christensen. Yeah. Oh, we finally shot together. So maybe that one will be coming out this week or next week. Did you watch the video where YouTubers adopt a kid with special needs viewers? Yes, I did. That was crazy. That was a crazy role for Shantae. Um, yes, Erica, I figured that was your birthday. All right, I don't know if I got to all your questions or not, but I gotta go get ready for church. It's gonna be a long day. I'm gonna be there till 6 p.m. tonight. We've got a workshop and all this stuff, and it's, it's 9 a.m., and I gotta be there by 10. I gotta get the kids dressed and ready, and. Blah, blah, blah. So thank you guys for being here. I'm so happy you joined me. I do this every Sunday, mostly, 99% of the time. So come back with your questions. I'll try to teach a shorter thing next week so I have time for more questions. All right, live true, love hard, and shine bright.